Dana Dentata, what's up? Hey. I got to say, right off the bat, I notice as a uh, kind of a wrestling nerd growing up that it looks like you have a Raw's War poster back there. I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Are, were, you, uh, yeah. were you a fan growing up? Yeah, like my dad and brother would watch it and I would watch it. But then I got more into it as I got older. Yeah. Do you still watch it? Um, I like to watch the older videos. I right, tried to right. watch the, I tried to watch a recent WrestleMania where like, there's no audience. Yeah, and gosh. it was just too weird. Like I paid for it and everything. And I was just like, this is so weird. I can't like, they could have put like sound effects of a crowd or something. It's so awkward. It's like the, the whole, the whole theatrics of it is, is trying to get a rise out of the audience. So not exactly. having the audience, it's, it's so incomplete. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, uh, I don't watch it too much anymore, but I did when I was a kid. And, and that's like an older one. You know, I don't think that's that's not their slogan anymore. So that's like an old poster. You're an old yeah. banner. Yeah, but like the dope. nostalgia. Me too. Yeah, I, find, I, I'm, I still get excited when I see the old guys, but I'm not really too up to date on, on anything new. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Dana, I've been... Um, listening to your stuff and it's crazy uh so i'd love to hear how you went from you know a uh, little girl watching wrestle wrestling to uh <laughs> to making the crazy uh music and videos that you've been making um so why don't you take us all the way back and just tell us how you got into music um i mean when i was younger i was really into pop music and then around like 10, 11, I started to get into like 50 Cent and Limp Bizkit and Marilyn Manson and Eminem. And I think that's really like my core inspiration and like my sound comes from then. But then when I was 18, I started an all girl punk band called Dentata. That's nice. why my name's Dentata. All right. And uh, I played guitar in the band and we'd play crazy shows, theatrical shows in Toronto where I'm from. Mm -hmm. and then we played a couple years and then broke up and then I was trying to figure out how to do that on my own like and what that sounds like and it took me a couple years to get it but now I have it yeah I that's interesting that you said you were in a punk band because you do a little bit have like a rock and roll you know punk rock look to you which is awesome uh but then you know right now you're kind of uh you know, you're, you're spitting those rhymes now. So you're, you're kind of in the hip hop category, but, uh, but I love that you admit that you listen to all sorts of music. You know what I mean? I was looking at yeah. you know, some of your, your, your self-professed influences or, or just what you were listening to. And, and I think if you watch a music video or something like something like Marilyn Manson might come to mind right away, but you're, you're not, you know, you're not shy about saying, hey, I grew up listening to Britney Spears and I liked Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think pop music is amazing. Well-written pop songs. I respect them, even if it's not necessarily my style, but like a good song is a good song, I think. Totally. Popular music is pop. Yeah. So you you grow, grow up, you know, you got your shifting musical tastes. You're listening to pop music and then you start listening to to rock and, and some rap rock and um, and you feel like you and then you were in a punk band. Um, so so how was how was the punk band? How long did you play with the punk band? It was probably about three, four years. Nice. Uh, what, what kind of like what would you say you guys sounded like? We started off sounding like experimental punk um that was i mean we just weren't that good at playing our instruments and we just wanted to be in a band so you're like it's supposed to sound like that we're being experimental <laughs> yeah i'm like the e string is you know it's just so good just uh -huh. gonna keep using that one and then as it time went on there was like a good metal scene in toronto and i just always want to be with the boys and compete with the boys and like they were all they're such talented musicians in toronto and i was around all these shredders and stuff and it just made me want to go harder and we started to get more metal and i started to get better at guitar so it got it started off like experimental punk and then went more metal was that more was that like high school was that right out of high school like how old were you when you were playing no it was, was like 18 19 20. okay and then so yeah. after a while, you're, you you stop doing the kind of punk metal thing um, and decide that you want to do your own solo thing. Uh, is there is there a story behind the, the name Dentata? 
Yeah, it's a mythological tale and it's also a, an actual phobia. Mm. It's called Vagina Dentata. Ah, okay. There's so a movie called Teeth. Have you ever seen it? I haven't seen it, but I've seen the trailer. <laughs> okay, so it's about a girl who has dentata. Ah, that's what dentata is. Okay. Yeah, it's teeth in the vagina. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I, yeah I, remember, it just I, I feel like that trailer went viral when it came out. You know, I, I remember, yeah. you know, you know, seeing it everywhere as as kind of a joke, but it looked it looked pretty crazy. So was it a good movie? Do you recommend it? Um, it's not that great of a movie, but it's it's satisfying. Like it's I think it's a great idea. Right, right. But you guys were were you ahead of your time on that? Or did you learn that term? Was that one of your inspirations for the name? No, the movie was not an inspiration, it just coincidentally was out around the same time. Okay. So you you start rapping then, and uh, tell me a little bit about how you went from the band uh, into rapping. Kind of just started leaning towards that as I was working on um, my solo music, because everyone around me, it's like, oh, you're solo now, and you're a girl, like, you should sing pretty and make these pop songs, and like, I'm down for whatever. So I was open-minded and was trying it and experimenting and everything. But like, I, I just always wanted to rap and I don't know, everyone was saying not to do it and to follow the, whatever they had wanted for me. And I just, on the side, just kept doing it, just kept rapping, making songs. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, you, 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 you mentioned you kind of have like this competitive thing with some of the guys you were playing with in the Toronto music scene with the metal thing. And I feel like there's like this cool aggressiveness to, to your rapping, uh, content. Um, you know, like I was listening to, um, what was it? Lil blood, uh, right before you, you came on here and I was just like, I was bobbing my head. I was like, yeah, this is me. Nice. This is cool. So where do you think you get that aggressiveness from besides watching wrestling growing up? <laughs> um, I think from, being a woman in this world and like all the trauma that comes with that like I I had a really rough life you know and so there's there's a lot of warranted anger and aggression and I've seen a lot of injustice and I'm fucking pissed <laughs> <laughs> so it's like therapy. been pissed for a long time <laughs> right is it therapeutic a little bit to, when you're, oh it's when you're my writing? biggest it's my biggest therapy like I do performance art of my trauma with everything so it's very much a release for me yeah That's how Spe I deal. speaking of uh performance art i was watching uh the resurrection of dana dentata which is like a 20 minute uh video um yeah just going through some of your tracks um uh with some crazy visuals um can you tell us a little bit about, about uh the process that went into making that and the inspiration yeah, that was, that's like just a artistic representation of my real life. Like that demon that's in that video I've had for the last two years, every show or photo shoot or thing I do, I have a demon with me. It's representing all the men. Mm, okay. So I have this demon with me everywhere and it's been a like exhausting nightmare. This having this, all the, different people play demons and and like just dealing with the prosthetics and the makeup and like also just having that in my art I feel like it was attracting a lot of darkness into my life like it mm. was it was promoting that and letting that in and and so the resurrection was I I did a lot of work in my personal life on myself and in my mental health and I really feel like I overcame all my demons that I have for real inside me. And so I wanted to just end that narrative in my art of having a demon with me everywhere. And I wanted to kill him in a badass way and just send him off and never do it again. And nice. just now, and now my art is shifting towards positivity and healing and happiness and light, even though it's going to be dark forever, but like, I'm not, I'm not letting the evil in anymore. Right. Right. Not letting it uh, get the best of you. It's kind of like when, you know, those people, you know, I've seen clips of people doing therapy Well, they'll, they'll like write down all their problems and then they'll crumple it up and then they'll throw it in the fire or something like that. It sounds like uh, yes. this, this piece was kind of like a, uh, a music video for you doing that. Exactly. And a That's lot what more. what it feels like. 
in, in a lot more gory, grandiose, crazy looking visual. Yeah, like imagine you wanted to just like release yourself from this thing that happened to you and you were able to put on like a whole performance about it and act it out and physically let that go. I feel so grateful that I can do that. Yeah, that's that's badass. If you haven't seen that yet, for those listening, check out uh, it's on YouTube, right? The Resurrection yeah. of Dana Dentata. Uh, so oh, it's yeah. like a it's like a 20 minute video. So so get ready for some uh, visual craziness for for 20 minutes. Um, and that was yes. going through uh, your tracks from your your EP, your first yeah. EP, right? Daddy Loves yeah. You. Yeah. What's the story behind Daddy Loves You? So I moved to L.A. two years ago to start performing because I'd never played outside of Toronto before. And uh, I started playing shows. And after a couple shows, I started hearing girls like yelling daddy at me. And then it was like <laughs> all the time where I was like, why are they calling me daddy? Like, why are they calling me a dude? Like, what is it that's uh -huh. giving, you know? And then uh, my friend was like, you should actually think about that a lot more. It's, it's pretty meaningful. It's like my power and strength is resonating as like masculinity. Mm. And so I feel like that's why they're like, even though I'm like a straight female, I guess like my intensity of like power and strength is, is registering as masculine, like daddy, which I'm here <laughs> for. I've, I fully embraced it. Yeah. Like I was saying, when I was listening to the music, there's something kind of, you know, there's something there's there's a strength to it you know it could it could be female strength or or masculine strength but there's definitely some strength and uh and yeah and that daddy term it's kind of like a term of endearment that you know you see it all all the time in social media people say it to people they like you know yeah it's kind of like a funny thing speaking yeah. of funny i i think the title of your upcoming debut album panty christ is hilarious <laughs> so can, can and i am sure you meant it to at least be partially funny um mixed with you know kind of the whole theme that you have going on so uh tell us the story about how you came up with that and what that means yeah panty christ i just envisioned it being everything about the album, the visuals and the meaning behind that, me becoming this superhero version of myself, mm. like superpower, no one can hurt me, I'm fully healed. And I, I wanted that. And I also like how it sounds like it's antichrist, but right. it's actually not at all. I, mean, yeah. I, I like to confuse people or make people think. And yeah, with that, it ended up happening over the last year, like what I manifested for this album and for myself, it was like, um, I, you know, conquered all my demons and I went through all that stuff. And like now the person I am now compared to when I even just wanted to name it, that is like, I am the panty Christ now. Like it started <laughs> to make even more sense and have more meaning to me. Like it's about healing the womb, how sacred the womb is like the, you know, panty Christ is like healing your womb and women have a lot of trauma there. And yeah, I really feel like I've like come back into my body and I'm in my power and I am the panty Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. As soon as you said that it was like a superhero kind of thing, uh, I did realize like, yeah, it does sound like antichrist, uh, which is why it's like a play on words. But when you when you take out the anti and just put panty in front of christ you know you're basically just saying you're like a a savior in, in woman form kind of yeah and not to like sound like i think of a messiah or whatever but i think i do say a lot of stuff that people don't want to say or tiptoe around it and i just am very vocal about it and have no shame and yeah speaking christ behavior yeah <laughs> Speaking of manifesting awesome things, um, you're also uh, a part of the podcast Halloween in Hell. So you're you're hanging out with like Machine Gun Kelly and Ian Dior. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the whole thing is like a scripted game show where we're all in this world in hell and we're all doing all these crazy adventures and tasks and performing so that we win. And it's really funny. And I'm, I'm very much myself in it, which I love that I get to have my personality and it's good music. Yeah. Podcasts are fun, right? 
I never have done anything like this before, but <laughs> yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, I think uh, just a couple of days ago, talked to Femme, and I think she's part of the the podcast too. Have you uh, have you guys met or interacted on yeah. the podcast at all? Yeah. She was fun to yeah, talk to. She was fun to talk to. Yeah, she's cool. So you were born in Canada. Um, yes. Do you, do you, how are you liking Los Angeles versus, you know, growing up in Toronto? Um, the people... and, and, and this year, and this year doesn't count because this year is not representative of Los Angeles. So I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, I've been coming back and forth for a while, so I kind of knew the deal, but I really had my whole LA experience in the last two years with like people, people are very different. Like I'm used to nice Canadian people saying sorry all the time and people in LA have different agendas and, you know, they're willing to do whatever. And I learned that definitely the hard way, like how crazy it is out here and how people can be fake. Like it really is, but you just have to really know who's genuine. It takes a while to figure out, but I feel like I figured it out now. Right. And yeah, I'm not mad at the weather. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm loving the fall weather that's coming in all suddenly. Yeah. Tell me this about Canadians, because I uh, recently visited Vancouver. So that was my uh, first uh, trip to Canada, and it was awesome. I loved it. Um, I uh, had a drink with a Canadian guy, and he said, and I was telling him how Canadian, how nice Canadians are, and he said, he said Canadians aren't actually nicer than Americans. I don't think they're just more polite. Do you do you believe that's true? <laughs> he, that's <he's>, very true. <laughs> he's he's like it's it's like it's like a you know they have more manners or or or, or you know different yeah manners. yeah so they say that tell uh tell us about do you like me now which is your your new single um which uh, i was i was just listening to and is very cool thank you um that song is based off a viral video from 10 years ago that went okay. crazy on youtube of a 12 year old girl and she's putting makeup on her face and she's like do you like me now if I put all this makeup on? Do you like me now if I have boobs? Do you like me now? And like, she's saying all this stuff and it's like, it, it went crazy viral 10 years ago. And wow. so I, Sounds someone hilarious. showed me that. Is it it funny? is really funny. Okay. It's so funny. Okay. Yeah. She's going crazy in it. Like, it's really cool. And she's like a badass 12 year old. And so someone showed me that. And then I was like, do you like me now? And then I just wrote the song off that. And it was really wild because uh, last weekend I shot the music video for it and me and my friends were like wonder where that girl is now like that 12 year old girl from that video mm -hmm. so I actually found her reached out to her showed her the song and she was so happy about it she's in the video she's like she gets to kill somebody in my video and I got to meet her and she was so excited about it so it's like really cool coincidence and just like meant to be and that is awesome would you mind actually i uh I, I think i haven't tr i haven't done this on the podcast before but i'd like to flex my uh my zoom skills and maybe we could watch, maybe you could watch the video for a second huh it's so good actually you know what i'm wearing headphones right now um but yeah, uh, true. I'll, I'll just uh, it, it's called do you like me now I, I have it pulled up and i'm uh i see it it's like this little girl she looks like she's like 10 she's, or something yeah, like that. yeah she's 12 in the yeah. video yeah well that's that's epic that's like uh kind of like uh what's his name tosh Pointo. he had like this segment on his internet show where he would like find these viral kids like who are on like vine or anything like that and he would have them like come in and recreate or or remedy whatever happened to to make them um to do that that's that's an awesome idea yeah. um so I know that 2020 probably, you know, paused some of the stuff you were working on. Um, do you, are you, now that you've, you've just released that single, are you planning on releasing a couple more singles before you drop the, uh, the full LP? Yeah, I should. Um, the next song I'm planning to release before the end of the year is over. I did a song with Travis Barker. Nice. So, and I'm trying yeah. to get that out before the end of the year. And then, mm. and then I'm just working on my album. He's killing it lately. He's just uh, He's the did, best. Did he produce it? Yes, and play drums on it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I was just talking about that new Machine Gun Kelly album, which is so fun because it's just, you know, it's like such a throwback in it in the best way, you know. Yeah, I'm so happy for those guys because 
they've been working so hard and they're good people and it's doing well. So I love to see it. Yeah, me too. Well, Dana, uh, thanks so much for, for sharing your story. Um, I like to end the podcast by asking if you had one piece of advice for aspiring artists, what would it be? Oh, I love to tell everyone to never listen to anybody but yourself about how you're going to sound, how you're going to look, like what you, what artists you are. You have to really pull that from yourself and don't take advice. People have told me my entire life to do things differently and not do what I'm doing. And it's, I feel like it's taken me so long because sometimes I'm like, ah, maybe they are right. Maybe I should try this a little bit. I'm telling you every single time they're wrong and it wasn't <laughs> the right thing to do. And anytime I was just like, ah, whatever, I'm going to do what I want to do and just whatever. It's always taken me places. It's great advice. Cause there's, you could go in a million different directions, you know what I mean? So it's, it, you can really get lost in indecisiveness. Um, and I think people forget that they are the ones who know themselves the best. So yeah. Uh, Alan, and even now it's like, but they want to maybe like everyone thinks I'm going to sound like have this rap song with this beat. And like, everyone thinks maybe that's how my album's going to be. And I'm not, I'm not going to ever be the one thing everyone wants me to be. I'm always going to, innovate and come up with different things and my album's gonna have like every genre basically.